We all know, another name for water is life, because, without water, people cannot survive. But what if that very water becomes the main reason for destroying humanity? You are watching Unique Storytellers, and today I'm here to explain the movie, The Wave. The name of the country is Norway. The movie begins by showing a small village surrounded by mountains. In this village, we meet a person named Christian. He is a geologist by profession. Christian lives in this village with his family, his wife Carl, son Sandra, and daughter Julia. They are a very happy and vibrant family. Carl works as a receptionist at a local hotel. Christian has been working in this village for many years, and today is his last day at the office. Carl and Christian had decided that after Christian's transfer, their entire family would leave this village, because, as beautiful as the natural beauty of this village surrounded by mountains is, it is equally terrifying. Like any other day, Christian goes to his office. Today is his last day at this office. Since the day Christian started working in this profession, he and his entire team have been keeping an eye on a mountain named Old Rock, because, if the water reservoir in the lake atop the mountain generates pressure, it can lead to destructive consequences. Due to that destruction, a tsunami of enormous proportions can occur in a matter of moments, potentially wiping out their entire village. That's why Christian's team always keeps a watchful eye on the mountain, using various means, and if they ever spot any unusual activity, they sound the security alarm to alert the people in the village. For the current situation of the mountain, security alarm installations were set up in various cities near the mountain. Since it was Christian's last day at the office, his colleagues organized a small farewell party for him. At the end of the party, while he was packing his belongings, it's then that he overhears his colleagues mentioning that the signals for connections 4 and 5 of Old Rock Mountain were repeatedly going offline. Rushing to the control room, Christian notices two signals fluctuating. However, his boss reassures him, dismissing it as a minor issue and advises him to leave. Afterwards, Christian returns home because today they are leaving this village as he has been transferred to another place. But even after returning home, his mind doesn't shake off the concern about the signal fluctuation. Repeatedly, he feels that possibly some impending danger is awaiting this village and the neighboring cities connected to this mountain. Then Christian took his two children with him and sets out towards for another city. On the flip side, Carl goes to her work she has a night shift tonight. After finishing work, she too will go to her family tomorrow morning. Christian arrives at the ferry terminal to cross the river. But a persistent sense of impending danger keeps unsettling him, a mysterious fear looms within him. Therefore, in the final moments, instead of crossing the river, he comes back to his office along with Julia and Sandra. Leaving his children in the car, Christian enters the office, he suggests to his colleagues that it might be wise to go the mountain and see what is happening on there in person. Otherwise, there might be a significant delay in responding to the situation. Christian takes one of his colleagues to the control room station in the mountain, and with the help of a rope, they descend into the canyon between the two mountains. There they examine all the machinery and they discover that a cable connected to the signal has somehow caught fire and burnt it, causing the signals of both machines to go offline. Christian returns to the office and tells everyone that these wires aren't supposed to burn that easily, something significant has occurred within the mountain that has escaped their attention. Christian tells everyone, as much as you may think this matter is simple, it is not that straightforward. But his colleagues don't seem to grasp the gravity of the situation. Christian emphasizes that if we don't take action right now, a tsunami could occur. Along with it, there will be massive waves, reaching a height of 40 meters. That means the tsunami could engulf not only this village, but also the nearby cities. Attempting to persuade everyone of the urgency, he advocates for sounding the security alarm and notifying the entire village to evacuate, ensuring that all villagers can leave before the arrival of the tsunami. But his warnings are met with reluctance or lack of understanding from his colleagues. Christian leaves the office, and as he approaches the car, he notices that none of his children are in the car. His children have left a note stating that they are going to their mom's hotel, where Carl works. Due to unforeseen circumstances, Christian and his family cannot leave the village that day. Christian returns home with Julia, and Sandra stays at the hotel with her mom. As the evening progresses, on the other side it is noticed, an office worker at the headquarters observes the signal indicating an increase in pressure in the mountain lake. He rushes to inform the seniors, and upon receiving the signal of the rising water level, two night shift rebels named Arvid and Jacob, they reach the mountain. They enter the canyon between the mountains and begin monitoring everything closely. On the flip side, suddenly in the middle of the night, Christian's sleep is disrupted, he can also feel something looking at the mountain. He quickly makes a call to the headquarters. 
The two people who were working in the mountains, they notice a small amount of stones falling from above the mountain. Despite the fear, they continue their work undeterred. Christian looks towards the sky and sees flocks of birds flying rapidly in the darkness. Christian can understand that the nightly flight of the birds might be an indication of some impending danger, because animals in nature can sense and react to small disasters before humans can. He quickly takes some files and continues to observe them. On the flip side, a major signal is observed at the head office. Everyone is in extreme panic. Arvid and Jacob who are in the hills, they are also terrified. The phone rings at the head office. From the other end of the phone Christian informs them, I've seen the old files, a significant disaster is approaching. Tell Arvid and Jacob to quickly come down from the hills. At that moment, a stone from the mountain falls on Jacob's foot from above, which rendering him immobile. Within moments, the headquarters comprehensive security alarm blares. The two individuals standing of the mountain canyon, they observe that the distance between the two mountains is gradually decreasing, two mountains are coming towards each other, and the thick iron pipes are breaking apart. Christian suggests triggering the security sirens in the city. The moment the sirens are heard, the entire city wakes up. Within moments debris descends from the hill and due to this debris descends Arvid and Jacob died. The entire city experiences a mild earthquake. Christian takes Julia and rushes away in the car. Upon hearing the sirens, Carl comprehends that a tsunami is imminent. For their survival, they must make their way to a high location in the city, because she had already heard from Christian about the tsunami. Carl and her colleagues quickly gather in the hotel to warn all the guests. Christian calls her, saying, We don't have much time, only 10 minutes left. Within these 10 minutes everyone must leave the city, otherwise everyone will die. Carl informs Christian, take Julia with you. We have a bus here, I will bring Sandra safely with me. On the flip side, a colossal terrifying scene unfolds, a massive wall of water, with intense force, is rushing towards the village. Fearing for their lives, everyone has taken shelter in vehicles, creating a jam on the road. The entire road is blocked, making it impossible for anyone to move forward. In a moment, Christian notices on his watch that six minutes have passed, only four minutes left. Within this short time frame, he must reach a safe location if he wants to survive. Taking Julia with him, Christian gets out of the car and starts running like a madman. Urging everyone around, he instructs them to leave their vehicles and run towards higher ground. The desperation to survive turns him into a guide, he is trying leading people away from the impending danger. Meanwhile, with everyone from the hotel, Carl realizes that Sandra is missing. Amidst the crowd, she searches for Sandra, but Carl was unaware that Sandra is in the basement. She rushes into the hotel, anxious to find her son in the room, but failing to locate her child she becomes greatly distressed. She attempts to call Sandra, but as he is in the basement where the network signal is unavailable. On the flip side, Christian glances at the clock, he sees that there are only 56 seconds left until the end of the 10 minutes. He continues to run with Julia in his arms. Everyone is running along the riverside road. In the midst of this, when Christian encounters a neighbor stuck between two cars, he gives Julia to another neighbor to take her to higher ground, and he helps the trapped woman out. But time doesn't wait for anyone. They see the enormous wave approaching dangerously close. Unable to find any other option, they get into a car. The massive wave crashes down on their vehicle, and a catastrophic flood swept the car away along with them. On the flip side, Carl is unable to locate Sandra even after an extensive search. After much searching, Carl heads towards the basement. At that moment, Sandra is still skating inside, he was unaware of the events outside. Spotting her son, Carl calms down a bit and she takes Sandra outside. In that moment, the bus has left, by which they intended to goes from here. Looking ahead, their situation worsens, as they spot a massive wave ready to engulf their hotel in a matter of seconds. They rush back inside the hotel and heading towards the basement, because, basement is the only place where they might be somewhat protected. Miraculously, everyone manages to reach the basement, but a tourist named Maria, she is swept away by the current. Then they close the basement door. Three people are stuck in water up to their necks. After a while the electricity also went out. On the flip side, Christian came to his senses inside the car. Christian saw that the neighbor woman had died due to an iron rod. He somehow manages to get out the overturned car, and he found devastation in every direction. It's as if he doesn't even recognize his own city, everything has been swept away by the flood. Anyway, taking control of himself, he continues searching for Julia, and he start moving towards a higher ground. Later, we observe that Julia is safe, she runs to embrace her father. Then, Christian starts looking for Carl and Sandra. Leaving little Julia in a secure place, Christian sets out to find the bus of Carl's hotel. 
because he knows that his wife and son will take refuge in a higher place by the hotel's bus. On the flip side, Carl turns on the emergency lights and realizes that they can't stay here for long, because water is entering the basement from all around, but it is not possible to get out of the basement by opening the door. When she tries to exit through the ventilation pipe, Carl discovers that the pipe is too narrow, they cannot go through it. To trap the rising water in the basement, Carl and Sandra hold on to the door's edges with their clothes, but it can be seen that the woman named Maria who had been swept away, her husband Philip began to behave strangely. The grief of losing Maria and fear of death, these two combination has destroyed Philip's mental balance. On the other hand, Christian arrives in the village with a boat. After much searching within the disaster zone, he finds the hotel's bus. Christian enters the bus. All passengers on the bus are in a lifeless state. For a few moments, Christian thinks that he might find his son and wife amid these lifeless bodies. With courage in his heart, Christian lights a torch and searches for his family. But they are not there either. Somehow, he then manages to reach in front of Carl's hotel. On the flip side, the water in the basement is rising steadily, they are trying to somehow keep their heads out of the water up. As the basement fills with water, they attempt to open the door, but the large pillars outside the door prevent them from opening it. Philip's condition worsens with time, he attempts to drown Carl and Sandra in the water in a desperate to ensure his own survival. But Carl drowns Philip to save Sandra and herself. Really, how terrible and selfish the situation makes people. It's indeed a tragic turn of events where the desperation to survive leads to horrifying actions. The unfolding events underscore the harsh reality of extreme circumstances, where individuals may resort to drastic measures in their struggle for survival. It can be seen that Sandra is gradually losing her morale. Christian enters the hotel and searches for Carl and Sandra in the darkness. He calls out for his son and wife but there is no one. Even when he comes to the basement, he doesn't enter despite seeing the flooded basement. He doesn't know that inside that basement, his wife and son are there. Seeing the flooded basement, he goes in the opposite direction. In the search, Christian eventually reaches the hotel room where Sandra was. Upon seeing his son's belongings, Christian is overwhelmed with grief. Because he can understand that since the belongings are here, perhaps his son is no longer alive. In intense anger and sorrow, he picked up an iron rod from there and continues to strike a pipe on the wall. The sound from that pipe, brings a glimmer of hope into Carl and Sandra's lives. Sensing the existence of humans, they respond by striking the pipe inside. And from the sounds produced in the pipe, Christian can understand that someone is trapped in the basement, so he rushes towards the basement. Drawing two or four deep breaths, Christian submerged into the water of the basement. As he goes to open the door, he notices large pieces of debris from pillars lying outside the door. Determined, he begins to move them away, he's striving to clear the path. On the other side, water also enters the basement through the ventilator pipe. Carl instructs Sandra to stay there, saying, you stay here, I am trying to open the door. In the joint effort of Carl and Christian, the door opens within moments. Christian and Carl are delighted to see each other. Christian tells Carl to leave the basement, and he himself goes into the basement to get Sandra out. Sandra is terrified, he has given up hope of survival. Like a courageous father, Christian tells his son, strengthen your resolve. Today we must face life's ultimate challenge. You see the water in front of you, and beyond that water a beautiful world is waiting for us. Your sister Julia is waiting for you. Summon courage within yourself, you have to succeed in this challenge. With his father's trust, Sandra submerges in the water, facing life's ultimate challenge. But, after going a little further, even though Sandra moves forward, but Christian cannot follow him. Despite Sandra returning, unable to see Christian, Carl submerges in the water again. Carl sees that a little distance away, Christian is submerged in the water. Christian has lost consciousness, he is unable to breathe. Carl brings him out of the basement, but Christian is not breathing. Carl and Sandra together perform CPR on Christian. CPR stands for cardiopulmonary resuscitation, applying pressure forcefully on the chest. After much effort, Christian's heartbeat gradually resumes. From the brink of death, Christian comes back to life. Julia is watching from a distance, she sees her family returning. Julia runs to her family, and they embrace each other tightly. And this is where the movie concludes. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. And don't forget to let us know in the comments how you feel the video.